Public debate over whether the vaccination is safe for children continues to rage. Professor Robert Boy is the clinical director of the National Centre for Immunisation Research and Surveillance at Westmead Children's Hospital, and he joins us now in the studio. And joining us from Canberra is Professor Peter Collignon, the director of infectious diseases at Canberra Hospital, and he's a professor of microbiology at the ANU. Peter Collignon, thanks very much for joining us there in Canberra. First, if I can ask Professor Boy, Boy, state health authorities are saying it's not likely to be a particularly bad flu season, so does everybody need to get a flu jab? Oh, look, my crystal ball isn't that good, and quite honestly, uh, we had a very quiet season last year, so this year could easily be a moderate to larger one. We just don't know. Um, And for that reason, um, prevention is better than cure. Influenza can be serious. Healthy people can get it quite seriously, but we particularly are worried about those with chronic medical conditions who we strongly encourage to get vaccinated. And what about children? What's your advice for children? Well, for children who have a chronic medical problem with their lungs, with their heart, diabetes, problem with their kidneys or liver, all of them are strongly recommended to be vaccinated uh, and it's paid for by the government. For children who are healthy, it's not on the routine list. So it's the parent's decision as to whether they want their child immunised or not. But if they're a brother or sister of an ill child, then they should be vaccinated so they don't pass it on. Okay. Peter Collignon, what do you say about the advice in terms of getting a flu jab this season? Well, not too different to what Robert has just said. If you've got chronic underlying medical conditions, your risk of getting flu and having a complication for that is considerably higher. So it's important that that group of people get vaccinated. The real problem is the 90% of children who don't have risk factors. And in them, the real problem is we don't have enough data to really know that we're always going to do more good than harm. Because you need to put this in perspective. If you're a child up to the age of 18 and don't have any risk factors, your chance of dying of influenza in any one year is well less than one in a million. And your chance of going to intensive care unit is less than one in 100,000. Now, we had the situation, particularly in young children last year, where about nine out of ten children under the age of three had a a seizure as the result of the seasonal vaccine that was used uh, from CSL. And then uh, a large number of those were uh, admitted to hospital, about 38%. And 2%, uh, or or actually a bit more, 5% even ended up going to ICU. Plus we had this uh, death in Queensland associated uh, with receiving a flu vaccine in a young child. Now all that means is that yes, the risk of getting a problem from the flu vaccine seems to be pretty low. And yes, there may have been something unusual about what happened last year. But the real problem is, I don't think we've got enough data in large numbers of children who are otherwise normal where we've collected um, you know, how much fever they have, um, any complications they have in a large group, meaning many thousands. Um, and I think we need that sort of data before we roll out a vaccine to potentially millions of children. Um, we don't even really have good data on, on thousands of children. OK, so what you're saying, because the information isn't there, you think that children should not necessarily be vaccinated unless they have an underlying condition? I think if they have an underlying condition, they need to be vaccinated. But I think this is where parents have to judge. They really need to know, well, what is the risk of my child either dying or going to intensive care from influenza? And the risk is actually fairly low if they're otherwise healthy. It it varies a bit with the age, but also your reactions to the vaccine vary with age as well. And overall in children, um, I mean, uh, people even when they get admitted to um, hospital with influenza, if they're otherwise well, the average length of stay is about two days. Now, admittedly, some is a lot longer and some go to ICU but that chance is probably less than one in a hundred thousand and your chance of getting a severe reaction to the influenza vaccine may also be of that order so I still don't think we have enough data in enough children to warrant recommending giving it to every child each year in certain circumstances um, parents may decide to do that but we need better information out there so parents can make a better informed decision Robert Boy, I wonder whether you feel that the flu vaccination should be included in the vaccinations that are given to young children, which I think is being proposed. Uh, It is being proposed. It's being looked at carefully. We actually do have studies that aren't yet published from the United States or Australia, from New Zealand, all in large numbers of children, thousands in fact, and that really does show that the vaccines that are being uh, produced right now and being offered are safe. So we do have that data, and Peter just doesn't have access to it. In terms of the effectiveness... Why, why doesn't, sorry, why doesn't he have published. access to it? It's not yet published. And would you accept that, Peter Collignon? Well, I think that's the very problem I'm talking about. I mean, we're supposed to take this on faith. 
we are supposed to work on evidence-based medicine, yet what studies are supposedly available, people like me aren't allowed to see. Now, how can you make an informed decision if you don't have that information available? OK, let's ask Robert Boy that. Well, it's nice to have a chance to speak. Um, look, quite honestly, I do influenza research all day, every day. I'm very concerned about the safety of children. I'm a paediatrician. It's what I do. And we are collecting the evidence. We are having national committees on which I sit, which advise the chief medical officer. And, you know, Peter doesn't do this all day, every day, so why he should he have the information? He says he's looking for the information yes, and so it's he can being make supplied. a judgment. And I'm working with the people who are providing the information to get it published as soon as possible. In fact, I'm working with as many people as possible to provide what you call a meta-analysis. We get evidence from everyone all, all over the world. And I'm hoping to have that available within the next couple of months. OK. If I could just change the subject slightly while we're on vaccination, there seems to be a recurrence of um, whooping cough. You hear about it uh, quite frequently at the moment. It appears to be on the rise. Robert Boy, why is that? Well, whooping cough is really highly transmissible. It's a bacterial infection that uh, is passed by coughing and by touch uh, between children and, uh, and adults. And we've seen a major increase in the last two years. I think we're actually on, on the, the top now and we're actually going to be going down this year and we'll see less because so many people are now immune from having been in, immunised or, or vaccinated. So whooping cough is nasty. It's really easy to transmit it. You need at least 90 to 95 percent of people to be immune to stop it from spreading. Peter Collignon, can I ask you, why do you think it is at the moment that a lot of parents are still very unsure about vaccinations for their young children, whether it's whooping cough or whether it's something like flu? Well, I think most parents, in fact, seem to be well informed. And for the vaccines that we have that are very good, we get very high uptake. You know, the conjugated pneumococcal vaccine, the vaccine against Haemophilus influenza, and in fact, um, uh, mumps, measles, etc. Um, the problem is we've got some other vaccines which aren't as good. And, and what we desperately need for influenza, for instance, is the better vaccine that you can have one or two doses and it protects you for 10 years. And I think one of the problems is that. Um, the, that can potentially confuse uh, the issue with the better vaccines. And I think that's one of the worries about this. I mean, vaccination is one of the best things we've had for society to decrease the number of deaths. But that doesn't mean every vaccine on every occasion for every person is the right way to go. And I think there is an issue that the influenza vaccine is not one of our better vaccines because you've got to have it so often and it seems to have side effects, at least in some people. And we need to actually be honest, I think, and say, look, we need to do better um, and have better data before we roll it out. And I think people are actually voting with their feet. The good vaccines, we have very high uptake. The ones that are not as good, I think people do make their own informed decision and have by, you know, not either presenting their children themselves, have lower rates of uptake. And I actually think that's not an unreasonable position for parents to have with influenza, for instance, until we have better data and we can clearly show this is such a good thing to do, it would be silly not to do it. Professor Boy, can I ask you, given what Peter Collignon has said, has he got a point in that the bad vaccine, and of course last year there was a lot of negative pub publicity around that influenza vaccine, is that what could possibly turn parents off the idea of vaccinating their children? Well, <clears throat> the influenza vaccines we're using this year are not bad vaccines. They're they're safe and they're effective. Despite have, what happened last year? We're not using that vaccine. That vaccine was shown to be uh, problematic. It's been withdrawn and it's not being used again. But it creates uncertainty, doesn't it? Sure. So if you have a, a rotten car and you then make a better car, do you still say the better car is rotten? You don't. We fix the problem. You know, uh, Peter's living in the past. We're living right now. We're doing the research. We're doing this all day, every day. We're providing the better evidence for better vaccines. <clears throat> and, and that's what we're about. But right now, what we have right now, not in the future, is a vaccine which is safe and effective. OK. Professor Robert Boy in Sydney with me and Peter Collignon in Canberra. Many thanks for coming in. Thank you to both Thank of you. you. You're welcome.